The sun rising from the west. Now, if you Google this, NASA estimates that in 15 billion years, the earth will stop and it'll turn the other way and the sun will rise from the west. Clearly, we're not talking about something that will happen 15 billion years away and we're not talking about a natural phenomenon, right? We're talking about something that uh, uh, when it occurs, it is clear and it indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused this and it's so clear to everyone that Allah Azza wa caused it, that you can't even repent after. Just like when you see the angel of death and you know that there is something out there, meaning I'm talking about like a non-Muslim, atheist, whatever, and they try to repent, it's too late. They saw, they saw a sign that was so clear that they, it moved them into that next world now. It's too late. So the sun rising from the west then has to be Something so clear and obvious that it's from Allah that you can't even repent after it. So you, it can't be a natural phenomenon. I met this guy one time and he was telling me that there is a, a comet that is so huge and it is going to pass by the earth. And it's so huge that when it passes by the earth, the wind, even though there's a vacuum in space, the wind after it passes will affect the earth so much that it'll, that it'll turn slower and slower and then it'll turn the other direction. And when it turns the other direction, the sun will come from the what? No. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responsible for it, people. Okay, the dabba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responsible for it. It's not some creature that breaks out of a lab. It's not people respond, responsible for it. It's not just nature. The landslide, it wasn't just na natural. It wasn't, you know, oh, this layer of the earth and this sediment that collapsed. And, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused it. All right? And then, of course, we've already spoken about this multiple times. Those people who think everything is figurative and they have no evidence and it's just complete, complete nonsense that the sun rising from the west is symbolic. And I already refuted this in the introduction a while ago, but someone actually came to me and they said, the sun rising from the west is Islam growing in the west. Oh, well, she, let's be realistic. What is this Islam growing in the west? Who is giving da'wah anyways? Huh? Then what's this dream that, you know, Islam will grow in the... Where? Who's giving da'wah? Who's talking to people? Who's passing out Qur'ans day and night? Are we working half as hard as Mormons, for example? Half as hard. Are we working... Are you putting forward the ten, one-tenth of the effort that the Jehovah's Witnesses are putting forward? We're not. Let's keep it real. We're not. But then we have this dream. Islam will rise from the West to Mash'ar. So this guy comes to me and says, Islam rising from the West, that's the sun rising from the West. Okay, if that's the case, and it's figurative, why does the hadith explicitly explain that you can't make tawbah when the sun rises from the West? If people are becoming Muslim in the West, why can't I make tawbah? It has nothing to do with anything, it doesn't make any sense. So, uh, in this hadith, in Sahih Bukhari, Abu Dhar narrated the Prophet ﷺ, uh, asked him, said, do you know where the sun goes when it sets? Now, of course, we've got in, the, in our world, and then we've got things happening behind the scenes in the world of the unseen. Like right now, these pillars in the masjid, these walls, they are making tasbih to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you're not hearing them. It's not it's like affecting the show and you're like, I can't hear you because these walls are making too much dhikr. It's not affecting the, how our world is functioning. So here in this hadith, the sun comes before the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prostrates. طبعاً, this happens in a way known to Allah that does not affect our world. Yani, when someone says, but how can that, if the sun left its place, what? you don't have to be a, a one-year-old to ask a question like that. It's clear. This is something that happens in a way that, it's, that does not affect our world. Just like when everything makes sujood and dhikr of Allah Azza in the world around us, it doesn't affect our world. So, uh, it seeks the permission to continue on its orbit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants it permission to continue. And then the sun, uh, uh, one evening or one time, the sun will come to prostrate itself before Allah Azza wa And its sujood, its prostration will not be accepted. And it will ask permission to go on its course, but it will not be permitted. And then Allah will order it to return from where it came. And that's when the sun will rise from 
the West. Remember the rule we mentioned in the introduction. Your job is just to believe, not to explain. If someone comes and says, give me the physics and the explanation, I don't need to give you the physics. All I have to do is believe, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable. Once, this is in Sahih Muslim, Prophet narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, once three events occur, it will not benefit any person to gain or increase in their iman. The sun rising from the west, the Dajjal, uh, and the beast of the earth. That was the sun rising from the west. And of course, then we come to the last sign before the day of judgment, the last one, because the Prophet said in Sahih Muslim also, the last of which will be a great fire. So that's why there's no dispute about which is the last of the major signs. It will be a great fire which will emanate from Yemen and usher the people to their place of gathering. So what do we have here? Let's see. In, in Muslim Imam Ahmad, the Prophet said, a great fire will appear before the day of judgment from the sea of Hadramaut or from Hadramaut, uh, which will gather the people. They asked, what do you order us to do then, Ya Rasulullah? He said, go towards Asham. So if this fire comes out, now let's explain with the fire. There's a hadith uh, in Sahih Bukhari that describes it very nicely. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the people will be gathered in three ways. Those who will have hope and fear, those riding two on a camel, three on a camel, or 10 on a camel. What does that mean, 10 on a camel? Taking turns. Uh, the rest of the people will be urged to gather by the fire, which will accompany them at, their, at the time of their ap afternoon nap and stay with them when they will spend the night nap. So it's a fire now that just comes and it's consuming. And so it's forcing everyone to move. And we've seen, we've seen here in America, fires causing people to move. So this fire will cause people to move. When they get tired and stop and rest, the, the fire stops moving. When they get up, wake up and continue, it starts continuing, pushing them, bringing them to Asham, the area of Syria, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, pa uh, Palestine, that area. And uh, when they sleep at night, it stops also. So then what if someone says, I notice when I stop, the fire stops, so I'm not moving. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever delays or stops or stays behind, it eats him up. So it will force everyone to keep moving to this area, the area of Ardul Mahshar, in the Sham where the people will be gathered for the day of resurrection. In Sahih Bukhari, the Nabi ﷺ said, when the trumpet will be blown, everyone on the earth and in the heavens will become unconscious. And Allah Azza mentioned this in the Quran. And, Allah, and, and the angel will blow into the horn so everyone in the heavens and the earth so everyone in the heavens and the earth will drop dead from shock except what Allah wills meaning uh, the ones in the heavens the angels will not drop dead from this first blowing of the trumpet the Prophet even explained to told us the, the first person to hear the trumpet the horn the angel is holding it and he's been holding it and he put it to his lips since the time of the Prophet He's holding it like this, and he's not blinking since he's been in another place. The Prophet ﷺ said, he has not blinked since it was given to him. And he's just waiting, and he's afraid to miss the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he blows into it. The Prophet ﷺ said, the first man who will hear it will be a man fixing his animal's trough. You know where like horses drink, like that big tub? It's called a trough. He's repairing it. He hears it, he drops dead right into it. Everybody hears it, drops dead. Everyone on earth is dead from the first blow. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the angel of death to take the soul of every other angel, to every angel. And then it's only Allah Azza and the angel of death. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes his soul. And then nothing is alive in the universe except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, to whom is the dominion today? Who has the kingdom today? And he asked the question three times. And he answers himself by himself because there's no one to answer that question. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings back the angel of death and he brings back the other angels. And then the angel blows into the horn and it's you completely, completely conscious, completely awake. It's you again in your body and you know that it was death because it's the truth. You don't think it's a dream or was a dream. You know that you experienced death and that was haq and you were in a world of haq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now it's you completely conscious. Again, it's your same body after thousands of years of being asleep, looking around. 